no matter where you work, it's 30% less money than Australia. Reason being, I'm not quite sure. That's the way the, con the country's running itself. Air conditions as well are a lot better than ours. Why is that? Not quite sure. We do the same job. I've been uh, 18 years overseas working and I came back to New Zealand on uh, maybe a 40% pay cut. This is probably my fourth visit to New Zealand now and, um, and I don't see that difference in you know, the price of food, the price of petrol, the price of houses. I think we're in, in lots of instances working for Aussie companies um, doing the same work, using the same skills and I dare say that our productivity would be no less than any productivity levels that they have in Australia. I can't really understand where, why there's just this discrepancy between the, uh, the, the wages and conditions. In, in doesn't matter which industry you pick, because we're, we're all in a global market. They're getting the same amount of dollars for the oil, no matter where they go within the world. I can't understand why there's, the, where's this, the, there's this big gap. When I first went away to sea, it was a badge of honour to get your union book. I couldn't wait. It was uh, my father was in the union, as it ended up, my brothers were in, ended up in the union. Back in the 60s, in the oil and gas industry, we had better terms and conditions and a higher rates of pay. There were some things in New Zealand we envied uh, in regards to the union environment. New Zealand has gone back continuously since the uh, abolition of the award system by the national government uh, in 1990 when they came in and then passed the uh, Employment Contracts Act. It was about taking away union rights and taking away uh, the mechanism that we had in place for collective bargaining. From an outside ob observer's position it looked like they just gutted the union movement. Some unions, as I understood, even went out of existence. For me to uh, come back to New Zealand, the main motivation was my family, and that's fair enough. But I kind of feel that guys like myself need to come home and make our own situation and our own country better. I think we need to pull up our socks and get those pay rates up. Eh? It's very important that our kids and our, our future is looked after and nurtured. Basically, there's certain areas we've dropped the ball, training, let non-union uh, rogue employers get established, and we've done <clears throat> we've done nothing to little to actually turn it round. Uh, the problem is that we work for money, an hourly rate, and if someone across the ditch is going to look after us better, we go. I've seen a lot of my friends uh, move over over to Australia, and I've seen a lot of people um, uh, move their families, their education, their kids for a better standard of living. And I believe that New Zealand is a golden country and we need to nurture our industry and bring those guys home in that skill base. What we've seen in the processes of globalisation is capital being able to move from one country to the other with no allegiance or alliances anywhere, no government uh, being able to have influence. Some of these corporations are bigger than countries. ProSafers uh, from Singapore um, they have ships all over the world um, paying um, different salaries to different vessels. Um, they'll pay like, third world countries um, low rates, they'll pay Australia higher rates, they'll pay New Zealand's a bit lower than what we get over in Australia. Well the price of oil is the same here as it is in Australia. And I mean, what's the difference? So, I mean, why should we be paid 40% less if we're doing the same job as an Australian? We were um, hired as individuals and we tried to negotiate as individuals and got nowhere. We were probably a little bit late off the, off the mark, the trade union movement globally in dealing with glo globalisation. We're in denial, I think, in many respects hoping that it was a fad and it would go away, but it certainly hasn't. We've put a, a chokehold on the, on the decline, we've, we've arrested the, uh, the hemorrhaging, we're now working on starting to, to rebuild. Well, the Trans-Hasman Alliance is really a collaborative approach from four unions from uh, two different countries, understanding that they're, um, they're both going to be coming up to a, 
uh, a uh, boom in the, in the industry. The MUA, EPMU, AWU and the Maritime Union of New Zealand have come together. An international union sitting at the table with international employers draws much more water than the poor old Maritime Union of Australia on its own uh, with an organisation that represents a larger body of workers across borders, uh, across hemispheres, it gives you a lot more influence at the bargaining table. Amalgamation is a good, good idea because strength in numbers is basic. Australian companies come in and buy us, so Australian unions are more than welcome in our workplaces. I think personally it's a great idea for the simple reason that if you've got a problem here, it's going to be a problem in Australia and vice versa. Instead of like five people going on strike, you've got 5,000 going on strike. It means solidarity. It means, hey, you're not going to step on him because he's one of our members. Whatever happens out offshore is going to flow inshore. And we just have to nurture this uh, relationship with the Aussies and make sure that we, uh, that we nurture it and get our wages up. Uh, there's nothing worse than having the boys take off the Aussie because of money. These companies are making hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and all we're saying is we want our fair share. They'll always use every possible argument that they think they can get away with to pay less tax and less wages. In recent times we've had a, we've had a company that's come into our waters who had an assignment both here and across the Bass Strait in Australia and um, they were keen to make sure that they had some continuity when it came to their employees that had already started work in the Bass Strait. The company Maersk, which is a giant company or by any standard, wanted to keep the full Australian crew on. The Kiwis were worried that if Australians came over here to work, there would be no work for Kiwi guys. From the point of view of the, of the company, what would have happened is those Aussies would have lost their job, gone out into the industry and worked elsewhere. And when the Maersk Cantam was coming back into Australia, you know, we would have had to say the same thing. Listen, all of those New Zealanders need to stay in New Zealand because these are Australian jobs and then they have to go through a massive employment program again, which was uh, going to cost them in, in the score of millions of dollars. With the, the Merce Cantan coming uh, into New Zealand from Australia, it was the first challenge to see, you know, if the alliance was really what it was talking about. The four unions, the EPMU, the Maritime Union of New Zealand, the Australian Workers' Union and the Maritime Union of Australia met and determined on what conditions it would come across. Our initial discussions in um, Wellington, uh, within the first hour, I thought, well, I'll be home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the negotiations don't always go to plan and sometimes they can be very challenging. Um, and Probably that first half of the first day um, was probably that, it was very challenging and we didn't really think that we would be able to, uh, to, to reach an end point. However, the later part of that day went, went quite well. We got into dialogue with them um, and as a result of that dialogue, we, we got a 50-50 manning agreement. The 50% of the uh, jobs on the facility would uh, go to New Zealanders who live in New Zealand. And, um, and if they did 100 days here, they can do 100 days back in Oz, so it ends up 100%. We were um, quite happy with that, as long as we were able to get uh, uh, the flow, flow on of Australian uh, um, oil and gas uh, wage rates. If you've got Australians working side, alongside Kiwis, you can't have them paid on different rates. It's just not, uh, uh, it's just not right. Are you working on an oil rig? You can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. You just, you're head down, you work for 12 hours a day, you finish and you, you go to bed. Then the next morning you do exactly the same. The only difference between that and prison is that you can got a chance of drowning. People are living together in close quarters, sharing a cabin more often than not, three or four of them in a cabin. They're eating together. They become always family. I think uh, uh, the company themselves realise that you cannot have um, um, a set of workers, regardless of what their nationality is, where they're from, working, doing the same work with half the pay or 30% less of the pay than the other worker. Basically, if you're sitting and you're working next to a guy that's earning 60 or $70,000 more than you, it, you know, I mean, job is still your job at the end of the day and you're there to earn money for your families and etc. But 
it gripes you to think that you're doing the same job as the guy next to you and you're earning a lot less. At the end of the day, everybody is, is as tired as the other person, um, but there's going to be four or $500 less in their pay packet. We were able to, to look at it strategically and say, well, OK, New Zealanders in general, they get paid significantly less and uh, we gave a commitment that that just would not be the case. The MERS Cantan would not come over until there was a commitment by MERS that the New Zealanders would get equivalency in relation to remuneration. So what we've done by bringing this Oil and Gas Alliance together is to demonstrate to the rest of the trade union movement in a tangible way, Cantan 4, that we can do this, we can fight uh, these global uh, organisations on an international scale. Borders are no boundaries to organising globally. We've done it. And the case study of the Cantan 4 is a classic example of that success. How are the guys uh, out the rig feeling now? Happy. They've just uh, had a decent pay rise, and I think they're going to get another one at the end of the month as well. So, uh, yeah. And I mean, it's, uh, especially the Kiwi guys, uh, they feel that they're worth something now. There's a big coup for, um, for everybody. N not only us, I think it's for Australia as well, because they know they can come over here and get the Australian rate as well. No matter where they go around from either New Zealand or Australia, they're getting the same wages. It should become the standard. <laughs> it's my opinion, it just should become the standard. If the employers think that it's just a once off and as soon as the Cantan pisses off back to Australia, that you know the Trans Tasman Alliance are going to drop off this subject, it's they're wrong. This is this is the start of something, and it's uh, it, it it will become the norm. People have uh, not only got to think about it, but starting making demands. It's only when you think about it, making demands, that uh, you're able to galvanise people uh, individually and collectively and in a movement to. Uh, to uh, achieve it. I read something a, a while ago where there was a New Zealand minister saying that, yeah, he, I'm, I, I envisage over the next 20 years that we may be able to get some level of equivalency with, a, with Australia. So, well, you know, 20 years is not a plan. You know, some industries could do it in two years. Some of them might take five. You know, with, with, with government assistance and with union assistance, it's all achievable and that's what, they, that's what they need to look at doing. Not waiting 20 years, two generations, we'll probably have another global financial crisis, so then there'll be an excuse, so oh, we can't do it now, it's blown out to 35 years. Then there might be a, a recession, you know, oh no, we'll have to wait till 2060 now. You know, so where, where does it end? You do, just, just do it. I seriously believe that the ball has started rolling now that the days of cheap labour are over. Your basic wages have got to go up. I, I think it's just what we've lived with. Um, even though we moan about it, we just keep on trucking along. Um, but, but if we can get the opportunity to get the same salary as Australians, why not? Why doesn't everybody push for it? Not just us as all makers, but everybody within uh, every other industry. You know, one of the things that, uh, is that the Alliance will be doing in the future will be, will be uh, lobbying, arguing, engaging, consulting with New Zealand industry that this is it. The time has come. Pay up. Like a decent day's work for a decent day's pay.